we want to bring that coordinate information right into the drawing. So we're going to now go to update the drawing from the CRD file because our drawing clearly has no points in it. Another dialog will open and we want to select draw points from CRD file that are not in the drawing. And clearly we have no points in our drawing so we want that particular box checked. If we had coordinate information plotted in our drawing and we were bringing in other information we might want to check erase points from drawing that are not in the CRD file. But at least uh, in this first round you would select draw points from CRD file that are not in the drawing. You could also feel free to check that one as well. It wouldn't change anything. And the symbol uh, name uh, that I chose earlier in our defaults was 9, so I don't have to to change it, although you have an opportunity to change it again here. It is going to place all these points on the layer PNTS and we're going to say OK. It tells us that it drew 111 points. We'll say OK and then we'll exit this utility and you're wondering where are my points? Well depending on where you are in your drawing they may be off screen. So we need to zoom extents. Uh, I like to type Z at the command line and then you'll notice one of the options is extents so I just type E and there they are. Here's all our point data. There's quite a few points. Some of them uh, are stepping on one another. It's a little difficult to see exactly what's going on. So we might want to resize the attributes associated with this point data. Now the point is indicated by the symbol, the cross. There's the point number in white and in green the R for random in this case um, is, uh, is shown below the point and the elevation for that point is shown to the right. Now Carlson gives us a lot of, uh, lot of ways to manipulate this data and in particular the attributes which is what we see on the screen. So let's say that we want to shrink some of this, um, the text sizes and whatnot so that we can see it a little more clearly. So let's go back to the points menu. And at the bottom of this menu, it has been dedicated to uh, commands that will edit the attributes of the point, not the point itself. So the changes that we're going to make here aren't going to affect the CRD file at all. We just want to resize the point attributes. So let's select resize point attributes. We come down to the command line and we see that it's asking us for a symbol size. Now if you want to increase the size of the symbol you'd put in a number greater than 1. For instance, if you wanted to increase the size by 50 percent, you'd put in 1.5. And that will scale the, the size of the text and the symbol by 150 percent. We want to reduce the size of the symbol and the, um, and the labels, so we need to use a number less than 1. So let's say that we wanted the, the attributes to be viewed at 60% of their current size. You'd put in 0.6. And if you wanted them to be 70% or 75%, you'd put in 0.75. We want, in our case, 
to resize the attributes down to 50% of their current size. So we're going to use 0.5. It's now asking us whether we want to scale just the symbol or the labels or both. Well, we want to scale both. I should point out that uh, depending on which version of Carlson you're working in, you may or may not have all of these features. We're going to select both, which is the default. It's now asking us to select the points that we want to change. We have the option of selecting screen, which would then prompt us to pick the points with our cursor, or if we have groups set up, uh, we can select by group, which we haven't talked about yet. And you can also select number, and then you'll be prompted for what range of points. Give me, give me a point number or a range of point numbers. But we're going to just take the default screen. And now it's saying select the entities that you want to edit. I'm going to say all. I could also window. I could window from the left to the right and only those points that are inside that rectangle would be included. Or I could window from right to left with the same effect. And again, all is probably the easiest thing to do. Press enter. It continues to loop asking you do you want to select more entities I don't so I just press enter again and notice it resized all of those attributes we can now clearly see the descriptions with the point numbers and at 1 inch equals 20 scale this is still manageable sometimes you'll find that uh, you have to play around with the scale it looks like we could have lived with a slightly larger size, but this, this works just fine. So let's zoom, extents. So that's the entire range of our points. What else could we do? A common problem is when things get busy, you want to move the attributes away from the point and just have a leader. So let's select that. And let's say that down here at point 601, I want to um, move that label away from that point. And you'll notice it does that and it leaves the leader so that you know which point it's associated with. That can be very useful. And again, depending on which version of Carlson you're using, that may or may not be available. Now you'll remember, when we started, the point numbers were not sequential. And I did that on purpose so that you could, you could see how we can renumber. And you'll remember we could, uh, we, we want to go back to the coordinate file utilities and we're going to use the renumber points option and it asks for the range of the points which would be all of them and it says here begin renumbering from and we want to say one and we want to increment point number by one which is the default and you'll notice condense points. It is going to take any gaps within our point range and it is going to eliminate them. So currently there's no point number two. Let's go back and confirm that. I'm going to cancel. Say list points. All. Okay. And you'll notice there's no point number two. And if we scroll down, you'll see we make a big jump from point 70 all the way to 600. 
So renumbering the points should fix all of these problems. So we're going to begin numbering from 1. We could, if we wanted to uh, renumber the points starting at 1,000, you would put 1,000 here. But we're going to start at 1 and say OK. OK, it, it did something pretty quickly. And you'll notice down in the in the command area, the command line area, it says it changed 114 points. So let's list all. And you can see we now have a point number two, which was point number three, but because the points have now been condensed and renumbered, we have a point number two. There should no longer be any 600 series numbers. Let's scroll down and see. And sure enough, we don't. Because you'll remember, it went from 70 and it jumped to 600. And now you can see they're all sequential. And we have 114 total points. Exit. Now the CRD file has been changed. When you execute those commands, the CRD file is updated. Now that we've renumbered our points, what if we wanted to edit just one single point? How would we go about that? Well, I have one that I do want to make some changes to. It's point number two. Now in the field, the way I um, place my benchmarks, they're typically near the bottom of the tree, um, some place that's convenient for the installer, but I'll shoot the nail in the tree, but I don't want that elevation for that point to be used in my topography. So let's say that, uh, and there are a number of ways to do this, but this is the one I prefer, <clears throat> and it's, it's also very easy. We want to edit the attributes of this point so that it has no elevation. Because when we go to contour, we can tell it to ignore zero elevations. You'll also notice that nearby, I've taken a random shot that I do want to be included in the topography. And that's why I did take a random shot so close to the benchmark.